Hi, I'm Zach with PRP Seats. Today, we're gonna to show you how to install our seats into the Kawasaki KRX. Our seats provide a lot more comfort and containment than the stock ones. At the end of the day, you're not going to be as beat up or worn out after a long ride. Head to PRPSeats.com and you can find all the seat models we have available for the KRX. Each of them comes with a KRX seat adapter kit. In a difference from some of the other UTV models we've done in the past, the KRX actually comes with seat adapters and our own slider kit setup. The kit includes mounting brackets for both the driver and passenger side, two slider kit setups, three short angle brackets, and your choice of seat model, which come tabbed on four corners on the bottom. A quick rundown of how we're gonna do the installation today. We're gonna to start by removing both the driver and passenger stock seats. Then we're gonna start on the passenger seat, putting together the seat brackets, the slider mechanisms, and the angle brackets, then placing them into the car. We'll then take our passenger PRP seat and install it in the vehicle. After that, we'll do the same exact steps for the driver's side. Start by removing the driver and passenger seat using a 12 millimeter socket, removing the two bolts in front and the two bolts in the rear. On both the driver and passenger side, you're gonna notice this little stop right here. You're gonna to wanna to remove that using a 10 millimeter socket. Then do all the same steps on the passenger side. Now we're going to put together our mounting kit assembly. Uh, there is a driver and a passenger side uh, brackets that go on the bottom. Each one comes with a fifth point mounting plate that you can place in the front if you have five point harnesses and need to attach that substrap to. We're going to have markings on each of these brackets that designate it as driver inside, driver outside, or passenger inside, passenger outside. Other easy ways to tell is the fifth point plates the tab is always towards the outside. Uh, these two, the inside brackets, are actually exactly the same. Uh, but then the outside ones, you're gonna have two different bolt holes that the slider mechanisms mount down to. The bolt holes in the rear should be farther back or closer to this L shape. We're gonna start by putting these kits together now, then placing them in the vehicle, then mounting the seat to the kit. We're going to start by taking our slider kits and mounting them to the brackets on either side. Use a half inch socket to tighten down both nuts. Next up, we're going to attach our angle brackets to the slider mechanism using these flathead bolts and a half inch nut and socket. There are actually two ways you can attach this. The most popular is going to be with this angle bracket facing down, which is going to lower your seat a little bit and give you more headroom. 
Or if you wanted your seat to fit a little bit higher, you could angle them up and have the seat raised and a little bit higher in the vehicle. First thing you're gonna do is to put your slider mechanism all the way forward so you can access this hole from underneath. Place your angle bracket on, then feed the bolt through from the underside of the slider. Hold the bolt in place and then tighten it down with a half inch socket. Once you finish this side, push your slider mechanism back. Then do the same on the back side. On the opposite side that doesn't have that release handle, it's a little bit harder, but you can still use your hand to pop it open and then push it forward. Slide it back and do the same on the rear. Once you've got both angle brackets on, you wanna make sure that both sliders are even with each other. You're gonna do the exact same steps on the other side. All right, now we're gonna get ready to install our seat brackets into the vehicle. When you pulled out the stock seats, you probably noticed that the bolt sizes were really different between the driver and passenger side. The driver has three long bolts and one short bolt. The passenger has four short, bolt, short bolts all around. Uh, for our install, we have supplied our own hardware for the rear that are longer than the stock ones. Then in the front, we have supplied our own longer bolts. All of them use the same 12 millimeter socket to reinstall. We also highly suggest starting with the passenger seat, putting the brackets and the seat in the vehicle because you can climb into the driver's side and tighten everything down and it makes it much easier to access the rear bolts. Place the brackets in the vehicle. To install the brackets to the vehicle, you're gonna use our supplied hardware that was just a little bit longer than the stock ones. Take our fifth point plate and put it over the two front bolt holes. Then use our supplied hardware, install them on the front two using a 12 millimeter wrench or socket. With your slider kit, you should have received two metal rods like this. You're gonna use them to attach one side of the slider kit to the other slider rail on the other side. Our sliders are dual locking. Each side locks independently of each other, which provides greater strength and stability while off-road. Once you put the wires through on these two spots, use a pair of pliers and bend them back so they stay flush. Like we talked about before, make sure that both sides are even and in the same spot. Once you've done all that, place your seat in. Use our supplied Allen Hood bolt, washer, and nut to attach the tab of the seat to the tab on the angle bracket. When you're doing this, make sure that just the bolt goes on the inside area on here and that you put the washer and nut on the outside. If you don't, that nut is gonna hit the slider mechanism inside and it's not gonna slide very far back or forward. 
I suggest that you get all four tabs hand tightened first so you know that everything's lined up and in place. Then you're gonna use a 7 30 seconds Allen head and a 9 16 wrench to tighten down the bolt and nut. For the rear bolts, it's kind of hard to access them. So the easiest we, way we found to do it is to get in the driver's side while the seat is still removed and put in the bolts on the rear section of the passenger seat. Just like in the passenger side, we're gonna start by putting our two mounts on. Then we're gonna tighten them down using the hardware that we provide. Just like the stock ones, these ones are kind of funky. These three are the longer size bolts, which are about an inch and a half. And this back corner one is the smaller one inch bolt. Then install our metal rod between the two slider mechanisms. Once the brackets are installed, put your PRP seat in. Then, just like on the passenger side, you're gonna install our Allen head bolt, washer, and nut. One piece of advice for the driver's seat, it's really easy to start with the rear bolt holes because you can pop this seat up like this to get in there and get those uh, nuts and washers threaded. Uh, once you do that, do the front two, get everything threaded and hand tight, then go back and use a 7 seconds Allen head wrench on the bolt and a 9 16 wrench on the nut. Always make sure that the bolt goes on the inside with the washer and nut on the outside. To tighten down the rear bolts, you can access them through this little gap behind the seat. And that's it. As you can see, our GT3 seats look great in the KRX. They provide a lot more comfort and containment than the stock seats and the slider mechanisms that we provided are really strong and tight, so you're not gonna have nearly as much movement in your seats. One final thing to note is that with our GT3, GTSC, and Comp UTV seats, we don't recommend using the stock three-point seatbelt, just because all three of these seats have a cutout here for the harness, and the stock three-point seatbelt receiver right here is just really too big, so even if you fit it through, it'd just be jamming into the side of your leg. We only recommend using the stock three-point seatbelt with our XC and RS seats. With the GT3, GTSC, and CompuTV, we recommend using aftermarket harnesses, which you can find at prpseats.com. If you have any questions or run into any issues during installation, feel free to contact your local dealer, or you can contact us at prpseats.com.